Friends, it's still here with the Hometown Homestead and I am in the process of canning up some chicken. Now at my house, we've done ugly chicken in the past, but it's not our favorite. So I want to bring you along and show you exactly how we get our chicken canned up and ready to go. If you paid attention to our pantry challenge last week, you know that I went through way more chicken than I had planned, leaving my shelf a little bit bare. So come along with me as we get it filled back up. The first step in getting this chicken processed is to go ahead and take your raw chicken and get it in the Instapot. I am gonna do this in several batches. I actually have a second tray just this big that I'm gonna work through to make sure we get one huge load out of this entire process. So I'm taking those raw chicken thighs, these are boneless, skinless, and I'm putting them straight in my Instapot. I am gonna put them on about 20 minutes of pressure and then just as they end throughout the day, continue to take out what is finished cooking and then I'm gonna leave the broth in the bottom of this pan and go ahead and add in additional rounds until I get through all of the chicken that you have here today. This will not be a process that I start and finish in one day because like I said, I do have a ton of chicken. Now, as you can see, I have a very busy kitchen. We have kiddos in and out and lots going on. So stay tuned to the end. I have a little outtake from the one you're watching there. Uh, and I think it's worth your time. It's definitely kind of real life two-year-old, if you know what I'm saying. So stick around for that. But what you're seeing here is just adding some salt and pepper to the pot. And then I'm adding about a cup of water so that the chicken initially on the first round has enough juice in there to go ahead and come to pressure and get completely cooked through then taking it over to the pot and getting it started. What you're seeing here is the chicken finished the next day. I am taking a pair of salad scissors, I'm not sure if that's the official name, but from uh, Pampered Chef, and I'm chopping up this chicken. I like to do it this way instead of shredding it because it leaves the chicken in big enough chunks to where it makes really good fajitas uh, and other just chicken salad where you want an actual bite of chicken instead of just shredded chicken. And I find that using this technique plus the salt and pepper and storing up the broth from what I had completed yesterday really makes this chicken super, super flavorful and a little less ugly on the shelf, if you know what I mean. What you just saw was that I went ahead and took my already cooked chicken that I pulled out of the refrigerator from yesterday and packed it into my room temperature jars. Now these are pints. I'm leaving an inch of headspace at the top and I'm getting ready to fill them with the beautiful broth that was left over for when I pulled them out of my Instapot. So I reserved all of that liquid and I'm gonna use it to go right on top of my chicken right now. Now this is also room temperature or coming out of the fridge, same temperature as the chicken. So all of my ingredients are the same exact temp and that's gonna prevent any thermal shock in the canner. I'm using my big all American today because I knew I would have more than's gonna fit in my digital. Now, after I pulled out all of the chicken, there was some gelatinous material in the bottom of the bowl and I made sure to divide that evenly amongst all jars, scooping out the fat that had solidified on top of the broth before getting it added back into the jars themselves. There was almost enough broth to take care of all 10 jars here, but I did top the last few off with just a touch of water to make sure that there was enough liquid in there before going back and debubbling. Once the debubbling was complete, again, check the headspace to make sure they were at one inch. The next step is super important when you're dealing with any kind of greasy substance going into your jars, and that is to make sure that you wipe your rims super thoroughly. 
I am using vinegar on my paper towel, going around every single one at least once and generally multiple times. This gives you a chance to make sure there's no extra chips on your glass, as well as to make sure that there's not gonna be any fat that will negatively impact your seal. Now, the lids are going on here, and as you can see, I didn't take the step to line up all the fronts of my jars the way I wanted before I actually went to the lid phase, so I had to turn that one around. Uh, depending on how particular you are, you might want to make sure they're all facing the same direction just to make things easier before you go. Now it's time for rings. As you can see, one of my little assistants is back in a new outfit because she changes every time she gets a drop of water on her, um, but she loves adding the rings themselves. I do only let her do a couple. That way, if there was something that would impact the seal, um, I would only have one or two that might need to go in the fridge, but she's actually getting pretty dang good at it. And as long as I make sure to put my finger in the middle of the lid, uh, the flat, I should say, to make sure that it doesn't move at all, it seems to go pretty well. And I will just go ahead and skip a beat to the end here and let you know all of these sealed up just perfectly, even with her little fingers involved in the process. Because everything is going into the can or cold, I did not go ahead and fill it in advance before getting started. The first thing here is I'm making sure to get my extra canning rack out because I'm gonna need to can on two levels, and then I'm filling with water. As you can see there, we have a little camera that the kids like to play with, so extra fun there for my little guy trying to take a shot as well. I also use my finger to measure. Each segment of your finger is about an inch, and I need three inches of water in the bottom of my canner, so I make sure that comes up to the appropriate level on my hand to make sure that I'm gonna have enough in there to complete the process. Now I'm stacking my jars on the bottom and adding in a splash of vinegar. The vinegar is completely optional, but it helps your jars come out cleaner, and I really don't like them kind of white and nasty on the outside, so I try to always remember to do that. Now I'm going ahead and loading in those jars. Again, meat, water, jars, and the juice or broth are all the same temperature. I'm adding in that second rack so I can go ahead and stack in what you're seeing there on the additional layer. And as you can see down there, a tiny little head messing with my kitchen timer. Uh, the kitchen timer doubles as the, uh, the scorekeeper or the time clock, I should say, for their little basketball games. And they use it all the time, whether they're doing 10 minutes of cleanup or playing a game or whatever. But that doesn't work when I'm canning, so I had to switch that back. Looking inside here, you can see the second rack and that layer below is where you're going to see the other. Now, putting the lid on an All-American can be tricky. If you haven't seen my first ever video, I'll make sure to link it at the end. Um, it was on my All-American disaster when I tried to put this lid on for the first time. Instead of running my own test load like it suggested, I decided to go ahead with pulled pork because I thought that sounded like a great idea. Well, the lid can be tricky, so make sure to check that out if you haven't yet because it, there's a tip in there that can save you a whole lot of stress. Putting the lid on, make sure to eyeball it and get everything even. I like to get down and really give it a good look around on all sides before pulling up the screws on opposite to make sure that they're getting added to the right location. I am leaving on the volume here so you can hear a little bit of the steam coming out of the scanner as well as a little bit of the ongoings in our kitchen. Uh, and I'm also getting ready to add my weight. As my canner has just completed its 10 minutes of exhausting the steam, so it is time to get it on. Now I have added 15 pounds of pressure because that's right for my elevation and it will just sit here and the time will not begin until it starts to rock or give its first jiggle. Now we're cutting to the end here and I'm taking off that lid. I'm letting it set a little bit ajar to give them time to cool off for just a moment before I go ahead and pull the jars out. As you can see, the chicken is beautiful, bubbling in that awesome juice that it made itself during the Instapot process. Now, yes, with raw pack, you'll get your own juice, but it doesn't come up quite as high, and so there's not quite as much for the chicken itself. And I love the extra liquid because I love to reserve it for other cooking projects or whatever I'm making along the way when I'm pulling out the chicken. These jars will rest on the counter for 12 to 24 hours after coming out. Now, one thing to know, your rings might be loose if this is your first time canning. Um, make sure to not tighten them back down. They will be just fine as they are. Once your time is up and they're completely cooled, make sure to go ahead and take them over to the sink. Give them a good wash and don't forget to label them. I know it looks obvious, but there might be a day where you wonder what exactly is in that jar. Any special seasonings and dates are always important. 
With that, I just want to thank you for stopping by the Hometown Homestead. Make sure to stay tuned for the outtake on this one. It's a very two-year-old thing. Uh, and I also want to welcome you and ask you to subscribe if you haven't yet. I really appreciate having you all around here more than you know, and I hope to see you back really, really soon. Bye, friends. Cheney, did you just touch that? No. It'll make you puke. I know. You need to get your hands washed. Get over here. Right now.